Steve Jewin, MMA Mania. Hey, Steve. Dan here. Hey, Dan. All right, Steve. You're on Big Country. Go ahead. All right, Roy Nelson. It's Steve Jewin from MMA Mania, and it's a pleasure to talk to you again today. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. Yourself? Oh, I can't complain other than the cold outside, but it's cold in a lot of the country, so I won't bitch at all. But I do want to talk about something hot <laughs> coming up. Your fight with Mirko Krokop, a rematch over half a decade in the making. Another rematch for you. Yeah, no, I'm 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 excited. Uh, you know, we're supposed to do this back in May. So, you know, like for me, I'm just excited just to be able to fight uh, to be on the same stage as Kroka. Not something that you haven't done before, but huge fight, huge opportunity here coming up on a big card next weekend here for Bellator back-to-back -back shows in Huntsville. Do you feel like it's a little bit interesting that you're sharing that heavyweight spotlight with Matt Mitrione, considering that you just fought him in a rematch not too long ago? Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm actually, I, you know, I, I, I wanted actually that rematch before Crow Cup, but, um, you know, I'll take what, what I can get. When the fight was originally supposed to happen, as you mentioned, Krokop pulled out with a knee injury. Do you think he's 100% coming into this fight? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm assuming he is because um, I think uh, his doctors are great, you know, because he fought, um, I think, after he had knee surgery. I think he had a camp the whole nine yards, and it was less than four months. So I, I think he should be, like, phenomenal. Well, do you think you have... An edge on him, psychologically speaking, given that the last time the two of you met, you knocked him out? No, I think uh, psychologically, um, I think with uh, Krokop, I think Krokop hasn't lost in like three or four years or something like that. So I, I think he's, you know, still riding that, that high, you know, like when you got that uh, that much momentum going going forward, especially being the risen uh, Grand Prix champion and stuff. Uh, I think he just, you know, as a fighter, you, you always take um, – all the pluses and just keep on compounding, compounding. But eventually, you know, it's the heavyweight division. You do lose. It's funny you mentioned the word momentum, and your momentum has not gone your way of lately. You had the close loss to Matt Mitrione, and then you got knocked out by Sergey Karatanov. Are you worried that momentum might be going in the other direction? No, not really. Um, I think with Matt, uh, I was robbed, and then with Sergey, I actually wasn't knocked out. I was actually thrown to the floor. Um, and then uh, because I, I don't think the ref was really doing his job that night because I kind of just took a DQ and actually got a W. So technically I won that fight. It's easy to say that and understandable that you think that. And that's that, not easy. But it's fact. Unfortunately, that's not what the record reflects is what I'm trying to say. So it doesn't go down that way. Is there anything you can do about that? Yeah, I think, I think I'm think what you mean is whatever you see as momentum because – my fans see me uh, the other way, hence why I'm back at uh, freaking Mohegan, you know, because that's where fans want to see me, apparently. But, you know, it's Mohegan's son. Of course. I mean, that's why you're in Bellator, because you've been a fan favorite for so many years. But anyway, back to this upcoming fight. Since you mentioned that he's on that win streak for four years, uh, what do you make of uh, his current fighting status, you know, what he is today compared to when you met him way back then in 2012? Um, you know, if anything, he's, uh, usually like how everybody is. It's just, you know, you either fight in great competition or you're just fighting the, um, the fights that you can fight. Uh, so I think it really all depends, uh, how you look at it. I mean, he has, he's been on a four, uh, four year win streak and, you know, won the, um, the Grand Prix, uh, in Risen. And the way I look at it is, you know, once I beat him, then I'll be the Risen champion plus, uh, you know, on my way to uh, on my way to the Bellator Championship. When you mentioned that you fight the fights that you can get, do you think that maybe Krokop hasn't been fighting the top level heavyweight competition out there? I know you mentioned the Risen Tournament, but I think the only notable name that he faced in that was King Mo. Yeah, no, uh, Mo, and then uh, the 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 one the wrestler. I don't know his name, but he's a uh, he has a like a great wrestling pedigree. Uh, I think better than. Uh, than um, Brock Lesnar or or you know any of the uh, only person I think that probably has the same wrestling pedigree would be um, Daniel Cormier. So I, th I think it all I think maybe name wise like carry wise but uh, but fight you know as fighter ability I think he he fought that 
uh, King Mo and that guy all in the same the same night, which is you know definitely tough. All right. Well, then let me just boil it down to brass tacks and say, who's had the harder road over the last four years? Is it him on the win streak, or is it you with the ups and downs? Who's had harder fights over that time? I, you know, I don't know. I mean, for, for myself, it's uh, the only person that beats me is me, so I, I still haven't found a guy that, uh, you know, that will definitely beat me more than uh, twice, so. Well, hopefully Mirko Kokop doesn't get the first, and then you'll have another rematch that you'll want. You know, you already got the match with Matt Mitrione you want to get back. You don't want to get in that situation where you're one-on-one -on -one with Krokop as well. That is true. That is true. But you know what? We we can uh, we can fight that in Japan if that happens. Hey, that would be a huge card for Bellator or for Ryzen either way. So as for the fighting career itself, you've got a good reason to say you didn't lose the last fight and you got robbed in the Matt Mitrione fight. But at 42 years old, you've also got to be thinking there's going to come a time where I don't want to keep doing this. Yeah. No. Uh, that that is that's. That's so true. I mean, that's why I always uh, look at, uh, you know, I have business ventures going on. And, uh, you know, my mentor, uh, Chuck Liddell, keeps on telling me what I should do. And Chuck is uh, still out there fighting himself, although things didn't go his way with Tito Ortiz either, which I know caused a lot of people to be concerned. And I bought that pay-per-view and watched it, and I thought, you know, as much as I love Chuck, I don't want to see him take a beating like this. Yeah, you know, Tito's just been on a roll. Between Bellator and doing his own thing now with uh, Golden Boy Promotions, it's working out well, but is that something that you'd also explore, too, if Bellator doesn't have enough fights for you coming up, would you take one with Golden Boy? Um, You know what? I would probably take one with Golden Boy, I'm, I, but I've already discussed stuff with um, uh, going over to uh, Professional Fight League. I just need to talk to uh, Scott to... You know, if I if I got some downtime, they, they they make their fighters work. So I'm all about work. Absolutely. And I've already talked to the president of the PFL for that. So, and he he said he would love me to come over. And then you know, I get to, I I'm more than happy to pick up the phone and talk to Dana too, and you know get some work too. Like I, I have no problem fighting wherever I got to fight. I'm all about fighting the best in the world. Absolutely, and fans are all about seeing you fight the best in the world, so everywhere that door is open, we want you to take it, but I'm sure at some point, somebody along the line is going to say, hey, you know, these guys are competing with us, maybe don't do a fight for them. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's all about it's all about, uh, it's all all about about dollars and cents, hence why they don't like you to, you know, fight anywhere else, but one thing I love about Scott is Scott likes to... Um, you know, see a fight, and he likes to see that his fighters do really well because the bigger you are, the better it is for uh, Bellator. Hence why they let, they work with uh, Risen. Of course, yeah. And hence why they're also doing this new European series that we got coming up tomorrow. Are you going to have a chance to catch any of that, or are you too busy with your camp for this fight? Uh, no, I, think I, I have to actually look at uh, what times, if it's live on uh, European time, then it might be... I might be available because it might be at, uh, I think, 2 o'clock our time or something stupid. You know, depends on wh where it is. Like, if it's in Japan, I'm not going to stay up at 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, a lot for a live event. But um, definitely I'll tape it. Yeah, as far as I know, it's 4 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Vegas time. So, yeah, it's right in the wheelhouse. It's not stupid o'clock in the morning like a Japan show. Yeah, so, no, there's, there's definitely something to watch. Well, your fight with Krokop is definitely something to watch. The last one was a highlight reel for many, many years. Are we going to get another fight like that here at Bellator 216? Yeah, no. I my thing is I'm always uh you know I always try to make uh, fans enjoy the fight regardless of you know that. Hence why I continued in the fight after I uh, instead of taking the DQ. Yeah, you always come through and deliver for the fans. That's no question. So. I think we'll see that again here at Bellator 216. It's a loaded up card. And what do you think of the main event with MVP and Daly? The sheer animosity that I've heard from them already this week was quite startling. Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I think you know, the one thing I, I do like is I, 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 like, I like both their sp uh, fight styles. So that's what makes it fun and entertaining for the fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paige has got that flashy karate style and... 
daily is just a smash mouth, straightforward, hit me and I'll hit you harder. Actually, kind of a little bit like you. Yeah, no, as long as, uh, you know, I take exciting fights, you know, um, and they're fan-friendly, I, I love those fights. Well, exciting and fan-friendly is what Big Country is all about. So we're looking forward to this next fight. You have this rematch with Mirko Krokop. But if you want to plug anything, sponsors, teammates, social media, please go ahead at this time. Um, as everybody knows, uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Roy Nelson MMA. Um, I want to thank my sponsors, uh, Monster and uh, Rico's and uh, Copper Gel. And uh, make sure you go to RoyNelson.com for any news and upcoming fights. That's a good plan. And one upcoming fight they definitely want to see is you and Mirko Krokop. So thank you again, Roy. We appreciate the time today. I appreciate it. Thanks. No problem. Thank you, Dan, as well. All right. Thanks, Steve. You bet. Bye-bye.